Well, hello there. Well, this is another one that's pretty much just for family, but it also says some things about Big CT. Big CT as a father, as a father of a sailor. Our son Roy, having been uh, through Navy boot camp between junior and senior year, graduated then in the spring of 66. And I know that I expected he would hardly get out of high school and he'd be on active duty. He was there through the summer. And it was fall before he got the call to go and there was still time to go on a bow hunt for deer. Early season. So Roy, Randy, and Dad, we go up to Lapalus and we take some grub and some shells and guns, or not guns, bows and arrows. Uh, we're going to go up on the side of Mount Evans, see if we can shoot a deer with a bow. Well, you know what? We got all ready to go and we're moving out. And there's a big old dumb grouse hops up into a tree. Well, we got to see if those bows work and we shoot a few arrows and I think it was Randy. Hit the grouse and the arrow stuck in the grouse and the grouse flew off. You knew he wasn't going to go very far and we spent way too much time after all those. You know, I'm really a conservative. Those arrows are worth money. So we got to get that arrow and whether or not we get the grouse. Didn't. Spent too much time, but we're back on the horses and we're moving out, and there's a porcupine, and I've got to show off, and i on the horse. I pull that baby back and whang, that horse nearly dumped me. Wasn't like my old Tony that I could shoot off of without a problem, but of course there's a lot more vibration to that bow probably than to the rifle shot. Well, anyway, we fooled around until it was too late to get on up to where we meant to go. So we decided, well, we're right in the area where we've seen lots of deer. We'll just make our camp down there by the water troughs. Because we know we've seen lots of deer tracks that the deer come in there to water. So we bed down. I am sure we had a little fire and had a nice evening. We wake up. I look over and not more than 10 or 15 feet away are two doe deer looking very curiously at these strange things that are laying there in their area. So we wake up, try to be gentle, and were. We didn't really frighten the deer a lot, but they eased off when we started moving a little. So we got dressed or half dressed, and we're going to go get those deer. Well, got a shot or two. Roy went around and circled one way, and Randy another. We're going we're gonna to get him driven in to Dad where he's going to get the best shot. I got within 20 or 30 foot of him in Quakies that there was no way that I could get a clear shot. But it was fun. We had a nice hunt. Well, it wasn't very long after that, and Roy left for the Navy. And he went through his school, the school that had been promised to him, the school that he said was a matter of contract as you dealt with the uh, recruiters and signed in. So then he calls and he's through with his school and he's been assigned to the USS Boston. Well, I thought, gee, USS Boston, I think that's a battleship. And I think I was right. Uh, I said, the son, that's a good assignment. No, Dad, that's not an assignment. With my MOS to do the things they trained me to do in my school, I wouldn't be on any ship unless maybe it would be a, a, a flat top. Well, I said, you just better accept the uh, assignment because you raise any question. And you go, again, I'm going back and looking at the Army that I knew that tells you one thing and does another. And I suspicion all the armed services were alike in that matter. I said, if you don't do what they tell you to do, they'll ship you off to some desert island and say, dig a six by six there. You dig it and they'll say it looks pretty good and I'll fill it up and dig another one right over there next to it. And you'll spend your career being taught that you don't ask questions. Yours is not to do, yours is but, and you're certainly not to question why, yours is but to do or die. He told me just recently when we discussed this topic, 
that, Dad, I didn't even know what you were talking about, and you didn't know what I was talking about, and I got it all straightened out and got the proper assignment. Well, the proper assignment sends our son to Washington, D.C. to work in a building that was an adjunct building outside the Pentagon, if I understand correctly. Anyway, Washington Intelligence, Naval Intelligence, and you, he took an oath that even when something came up here a year or two ago that I was concerned about and questioned him, he said, Dad, that's kind of related to the things that I've been sworn to duty to never talk about, and he's a good serviceman, a good Navy man. He didn't intend to talk about it, and I didn't intend to ask any further questions, and didn't. Well, he's stationed. Washington, D.C., a lot of black people there. A lot of unrest that I've been seeing about the Mexican-Americans and the brown conflict that was going on in the Alamosa area. A little later, it was going to teach me a lot more about that. But I told him on the telephone one day, son, while you're there, get acquainted with some black people, maybe even date a black girl. He said, Dad, you don't understand the realities of this place. And I don't know if he told me then or later, but think at some time he told me that they were advised, that the sailors that were at his duty station, do not go back and forth from where you work to where you sleep alone after dark, go in pairs. Well, he didn't always do that, and one night he's on his way back to the barracks, and he's surrounded by a group of black boys that are not happy, and they hustle him around the corner uh, up the side of a building, and he can tell that he's in deep trouble. He's likely to get the crap beat out of him. But they call up a youngster. He, I don't remember he said the age, but a little boy. You know, not a little, little boy, but a smaller boy. And they ask the boy, is this him? And he says, no, that is not him. And they let him go. My God, if that little kid had been just mad enough at Anglos in general to say, I don't care whether it's him or not to himself, He's Anglo and he gets it. How awful, how, how awful what they could have done to our son and what they're doing to him, bad things, what they might have done to him and how he looks at the world. Because I'm proud of my kids. I suppose they were more subjected to racial prejudice than I know, but they sure don't show any racial prejudice that I know of, and I'm proud of them. Particularly proud of Roy, he put in his duty time, came back, went to college, and has put in a career as a teacher, and always a reserve policeman. And the, he retired last spring, and already he's on a full-time sub-teaching thing that's gonna go for several weeks for a mother that just had a baby but cesarean. And this morning, Labor Day, September 08, I called him and he was on duty as a paid extra policeman in the town of Clearwater, Kansas, where he put in all those years as a school principal. Proud of you, son.